So um, thank you very much for um, coming to this session. Um, we will discuss today about distributed service bundles for Cloud Foundry. Um, my name is Krishanu Viswas and I am one of the product and engineering managers at SAP. I uh, work from SAP Labs India. So <clears throat> in the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, we will discuss about the idea of uh, distributed service bundles, what it is, and uh, why are we uh, basically um, talking about this topic? What's the motivation? Um, what's, the, what's the future of it and where we are and what's the idea is all about? So um, uh, today, I think the applications are not merely a cloud, uh, client server uh, anymore, right? Uh, all the applications are kind of distributed in nature. So uh, Cloud Foundry gives us a model uh, wherein if you have an application, you can bind it to a backing service, and that's how your application can talk to a backing service. So this is via the service uh, broker concept that Cloud Foundry has, and uh, this is kind of well established. This is working. All fine, all good. But in the enterprise space, what we see today that there are more and more use cases for service-to-service -service consumption. So um, think of uh, change data capture uh, pipeline, for example. So the, the database is the single source of truth in, in, in this concept. And the changes extracted from the transaction or the commit log. So uh, all the data that comes in into your database that becomes the source of the entire pipeline, so to say. And um, you extract that information out of the database automatically um, through some eventing mechanism and you push those uh, events as a message to some message broker in between. Could be Kafka or could be something else. And then uh, you have a set of services which are listening to this uh, particular pipeline. And then they take these messages out and do the stuff that they want to do on these messages. So for example, in this uh, a record is inserted and then you want to index that or you want to make it searchable, um, maybe all the sales order that you want to show. Um, to, through some queries in an OLAP system, maybe, right? So uh, you have uh, then an indexing or a searching system which will take this event out, and then if, uh, this will make it uh, searchable or, uh, or put an index on it so that it is easily uh, searchable. You can build a cache out of it. You can build um, some kind of a machine learning um, um, a system around, around these events. Um, and then, uh, of course, the, these are different services. You can also put some kind of a monitoring around it. So these are the different services that can actually be hooked into this pipeline. And uh, they are all different services. And they hook into the pipeline. They extract their data and then they process on this, on this data. So this is change data capture a kind of a pipeline. Uh, why are we talking about this in the context of distributed service bundles? Um, the question here then is that if I have so many of those services um, the, which, are, which are kind of working on the same set of data, can I just think of um, in Cloud Foundry terms that these services are kind of deployed together, managed together? Right? So that is where um, this idea of distributed service bundles comes in, uh, comes in and we'll talk about it uh, in a moment in more detail. So this is, uh, if you're more interested, uh, just visit this uh, Debitium uh, project from Red Hat. Um, uh, they are offering a lot of uh, decode buff for uh, different databases that you can put it along with the database and then it can extract this database events out of it and then um, yeah, uh, it can give you the information the way in the pipeline the way you want. You can also um, read a little more about LinkedIn's Databus um, infrastructure. They're also kind of doing the similar kind of a thing. To make this concept a little more clear, let's talk about um, a simple blogging site. So uh, what happens is you have a blogging site and uh, then uh, you ingest blogs basically, right? So you have the data, and then you have the metadata that you want to store into the database, right? And uh, from this database, basically, this events gets um, um, uh, emitted. And um, then you have certain search mechanism implemented by means of, let's, let's say, Elasticsearch, 
right so it will index all these blogs based on the metadata on the content etc so that other users who are searching for it can get it easily another uh, uh, service that is probably looking into this change data uh, pipeline is probably the aggregates maybe it's a spark service that uh, is hooked into this pipeline it takes it out it does the aggregate you know kind of uh, keeping information of who is writing blogs how many of them and then things like that and then maybe you want to apply some kind of a classification or class clustering on top of this blogging information that is coming in, maybe an ML service, a machine learning service is running there. So what I mean to say here is that, that there are many services which are kind of hooked into this pipeline, and these services are all working together. Right? So the question is now if we can have a system in, in place where all these services are kind of managed together. Um, yet not sacrificing on, on, on the flexibility part of it, I should be able, because tomorrow the technology will probably change. I might need to bring in another service in, take some service out, maybe Spark is out there, maybe something else. Uh, I should also be able to do that. So uh, this is the motivation. So a set of service, then how, what do I do about it? That's where um, you know uh, the thinking of uh, composite services comes into into the picture. So in Cloud Foundry realm, basically, each backing service in itself is, is kind of distributed, right? Um, and then um, a set of services, if we can just bundle them together, creating a composite service out of it um, that is deployed, undeployed, updated, operated, and um, monitored and scaled together. Right, and thereby enabling inter-service communication. The services should be able to also talk to each other, um, allowing credential and message exchange between the constituent services. So, from Cloud Foundry's uh, proven model of app talking to a service, we are now talking about service-to-service -service communication, a set of services deployed together. Um, be able to, we should be able to uh, flexibly modify this composition over a period of time uh, that this bundle then uh, we can bring in new services into it and can take uh, maybe some existing services out of it. So it should be flexible enough. And uh, the composition is the key here, allowing bundling and wearing of uh, individual services. So that's the central idea around distributed service bundles or the composites. And uh, there is no such mechanism today um, in, in, the, in, the, in the Cloud Foundry backing services world uh, that realizes this. Uh, we have tried to build um, a, a proof of concept around it, um, and um, that's what I'm here to present you. So what we need, and that is where uh, we come in, we need an automated way now to provision these services as, as a single unit. Right, a bundle, uh, wherein the wearing of the services is automatically taken care of uh, and controlled by the service broker. So we need a service broker now, um, an able, a capable service broker, and uh, that is where it comes to service fabric. Um, if you are not aware of service fabric, uh, I've just put up a link there, have a look. Um, so um, this is a proposed, the service fabric is a proposed project for incubation now. Um, I think you've heard in the keynote about service fabric, SAP's uh, uh, movement towards uh, supporting uh, multi-cloud, uh, including Azure, including GCP, and AWS and OpenStack. Um, and also, of course, service fabric is battle tested and being used uh, within SAP uh, and for SAP customers for, for quite some time now um, uh, on production. Uh, and uh, service fabric is, is uh, able to um, uh, spin Bosch based production ready services as well as Docker services for developers only. So, what is service fabric? It's, it's a set of tools which can be used to provision, manage, and operate backing services at scale for Cloud Foundry applications right? um, in an automated and managed way on a variety of cloud infrastructures. So we needed this broker, and uh, we wanted to ask this broker, hey, it is no longer a CF uh, create service, and um, it's just one service instance that you have to create, but now it's going to be multiple of those services, and how do we uh, you know, kind of do this multiple service? We manage and operate them is, is something that where uh, we needed service fabric. Uh, just to be a little more on the service fabric so that you get the idea. So um, the service fabric, um, usual, you have the CF CLI, and um, uh, with that you, you say CF create service, and um, 
and then the call comes to the central component you see there the service fabric broker and uh, service fabric broker then based on the request uh, um, uh, that's coming from you, you either it spins let's say a bosch based service maybe let's say um, it's a postgres or a mongodb uh, or or maybe a redis or a RabbitMQ today or it could be one of the docker services of these services um, docker services are like single node it just comes and go away no sls nothing but um, the bosch based services are they, they come in clusters so postgresql it has masters it has uh, the slaves and it's it's a proper setup with the failover given um, so that's what it does uh, same for mongodb um, based on the request it, it either goes towards the bosch or it goes to the swarm uh, manager so the advantage um, that we see here with the service fabric that and that that's the reason why we used we chose service fabric for this uh, particular use case is, the, is that that um, it, it provisions manage and operate service instances at scale uh, in an automated and managed way and then it enables seamless application development and deployment experience you start your developer in your company it starts with a docker service and uh, when he's comfortable he has worked uh, his application out against this docker service let's say it's a postgres service the database just came out uh, immediately uh, when he started uh, developing his application it all works fine now then maybe you want to move more towards uh, a production grade service then you would probably need a bosch based um, uh, postgres in that case um, so it, it's kind of a gradual elevation of a developer developing his application from a very nascent state uh, to a production setup it supports uh, this transformation multi-cloud you don't have to care about um, uh, uh, like uh, underlying which particular IaaS you are running on uh, it could be it could be I, uh, AWS OpenStack Azure and GCP um, for the developers it all looks the same he wants suppose Chris he just says that I want it on AWS or next time I want it on Azure uh, or GCP that's it right we uh, i think service fabric takes the, the uh, does the heavy lifting uh, of managing that um integrated monitoring alerting this is very important when you have spawned let's say hundreds of this kind of uh, uh, systems and then you have uh, hundreds of virtual machines running around right now question is how is my postgres doing how is my mongo doing uh, how do you monitor them um uh, audit logging is important who is inserting what into your database needs to be tracked and all this is all integrated within service fabric um, and as i mentioned before it's battle tested uh, it's used within sap um, security is of utmost important update and upgrade of the systems are important so uh, this has all been taken care of uh, within the service fabric hence uh, the choice of uh, using service fabric for uh, for this scenario now that's, uh, that takes me to, to the demo part. I have a, we have a small demo uh, so showing uh, what it means to, uh, to have something like a, a service bundle on this. Uh, my setup looks like this, uh, that um, I have an account on AWS and um, where I will be logging in into the jump box and then we need of course the Bosch director which will spin the cluster for us. Um, we of course need Cloud Foundry wherein our application will be running and of course we need uh, service fabric. Uh, the Bosch releases that we have used in this demo is uh, like Kafka, Zookeeper, and uh, Postgres Service Fabric itself is, is a Bosch release and, and Redis. Um, the, the demo scenario goes something like this, that uh, we have an app which is basically ingesting uh, tweets uh, and um, which is pushing these tweets into the Postgres um, and so it, it generates some kind of a transaction log and then there is this debatium decode buff sitting on the postgres node uh, which is kind of pushing this uh, decoding this um, wall messages and pushing it into kafka and then um, we have a sentiment analyzer app sitting there um, hooking into hooked into kafka and um, you know kind of trying to do some kind of a very basic sentiment analysis that's that's not the problem we are trying to solve here just wanted to say that you know you, you can hook up this kind of even apps or services as many as you want into this queue um, following this change data capture pipeline that we have seen um, and then you can do some kind of an analysis on top so very basic uh, but let's get started with the demo um, let's say <clears throat> okay okay let's make it slightly bigger here um 
so if you see now i've already logged in um the marketplace if you look at you see that um, there is a, a service called distributed service bundle um, and then it has a plan called standard um, there are other services as well for example mongodb uh, rabbitmq they are independent and individual services uh, but this one is is a composite service uh, that we uh, we are interested in now uh, in this so what we do now is uh, we we try to create a service so cf create service um, and then the service name we need um, we need the plan and let's say that this is our cf summit puzzle 17 instance okay fade and response code yes sir in terms of body okay so um i i have to check on this um uh, but uh, for, for, for the sake of time, I think uh, we, uh, I have uh, prepared um, an instance already. Maybe we can um, go ahead with that. So this instance is already, uh, already there. And uh, you see that demo instance, and uh, this is, of course, um, uh, uh, this distributed service bundle. This, this particular service instance is created already for us. So let's take a look at CF uh, uh, service, and then... Um, maybe this demo instance let's see what details it has so it says that the service is this and from this the service instance is created um, and of course uh, these are the services you have in this bundle right so this postgres kafka and redis and um, if you if you um, look at the composition now in this system we have just the postgres and kafka so what we can do now is um, we can uh, see where our application is and uh, this is our application this basically this application shows the sentiment as i said the sentiment analysis and the other application which is ingesting uh, from the uh, from the uh, twitter and that is already running so let's see that uh, and and this is looking into or hooking into the hash the hashtag cf summit so um, i basically um, you know, refresh this, uh, we see that there are 1,542 positive comments about it, and um, there are 372 negative comments about uh, coming in. But uh, this, this analysis is, is not important. Uh, I mean, it is also sometimes giving you wrong uh, result. Uh, uh, but yeah, basic sentiment analysis that is happening following the same change data capture. And what is important here is that, that we have kind of deployed this entire application together um, uh, 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 the services together uh, so that it makes a uh, 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 service bundle. Now, um, so let's let's see. We said that you know this service we should be able to manage, monitor it together, right? So we should be able to update it together, right? So what we can do is um, we can look at the monitoring dashboard and, and you can see this is the monitoring dashboard um, where you get to see all the services together you see kafka you see postgres um, and then you see uh, basically uh, so you see this is the kafka system which is running inside um, there's a Kafka system which is running inside. Um, this is a Postgres, uh, the two node Postgres server which is running inside. So basically, it's a composite that you are trying to look at how my composite is doing. Yeah. So, um, and you see the CPU system here, the CPU usage, likewise you can see the memory usage uh, of, of, of individual systems here. And um, yeah, so the idea here is that, um, can we now, since it is in a POC state at this point in time, we were thinking and I, I, I was interested in taking your opinion and feedback on um, do you think that it makes sense uh, somehow to think in this in this line do you see that you have use cases around managing this kind of services together in your company um, somehow then we can of course take it forward uh, you know can think of um, you know collaborate with you writing some kind of a standard specification of how the services can be um, uh, can be managed together uh, and, and things like that so that that was basically the idea so, um, yeah, um, I, I think um, that was pretty much I have. I can show you a little more on um, if, if you're if you're interested in, um, for for example, um, let's say that this uh, this particular service now um, has Kafka and Postgres running. Now, like let's say that you want to bring in a machine learning service which needs Redis as well. Um, so how do you bring it in? It follows all the all the CF constructs. So it say you say CF 
um, update service, um, and then uh, you you basically give the service name, which is uh, uh, the service instance ID, and then you pass on basically. Um, I, I have. Um, I'll show you the fi file here also. Um, see if summit. I pass a JSON. Uh, I pass a JSON file. So I think it is add redis.json, right? Yes, I meant update service. Okay, so um, this is this is started now. If we say CF um, CFS, and then you see that the update is in progress. So in a, in a moment, what you'll see that the service composition, which was uh, made up of Kafka and Postgres before, now will soon have a Redis also inside. Uh, so this way, you can also remain flexible in kind of bringing in your new service inside and take the other one out. And, and, and the entire wiring and, um, and everything else is being taken care of by Service Fabric um, uh, extension that we have built here. Yeah, so um, this is it pretty much that I wanted to show and talk about distributed service bundles. If you have any question or if you have any suggestion uh, on how should this be done, because this is at a, at a prototype stage at this point in time, we are thinking of uh, maybe it makes sense uh, for larger companies who want to manage a lot of, let's say, big data services, for example, together, uh, all of them, Spark, maybe Cassandra, Kafka together. Um, maybe some other companies have different other uh, change data capture scenarios wherein they want to manage and maintain all the services together. So just wanted to know from you if you, if you have any such use case, then maybe we can talk about it a little bit. If, if this really makes sense. Yeah. Um, how, how do you manage to, to, to transmit the credential simultaneously for many services at once? Yeah. So um, uh, basically, this is managed by Service Fabric, uh, and this is all sitting on the on the same subnet at this point in time. Uh, so within the subnet, I think uh, the systems can reach. Uh, each other, and uh, of course, the uh, cred hub is something that we can use going forward to to you know kind of keep the credentials together, and then um, you know everybody has one place uh, where they can go for the credentials and can uh, pick up the credentials for the service that they want to uh, basically consume. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, of course. Um, uh, so Elk stack means um, you have this um, this this uh, this uh, Kibana and and Logstash and all of the system. So again, these three systems are again disparate systems, but they work together. Of course, then um, yes, it's it could be a nice use case that these three services are kind of put together. But I guess that for Elk, you already have a Bosch release. And uh, this, this you can then um, this Bosch release can be directly uh, be provisioned directly um, on the on the system. So you don't have to do any magic there. I think this use case will fit more on uh, a set of heterogeneous services that you may have in your company, right? For which there is probably no single Bosch release exists today, right? Uh, if you have a Bosch release, take it, just deploy it using Service Fabric. Everything will work. Right, um, uh, but if it is kind of a heterogeneous a set of services that that you need uh, to deploy, and that, that is probably the pipeline you want to support within your company, then bring them together uh, as a composite, and then kind of try to deploy this. So they are all independent Bosch releases, and um, then um, yeah, create your pipeline by deploying them. Uh, Fabric will take care of kind of deploy them one after the other and ensure that internally they are able to access each other and um, yeah they are kind of managed together. Uh, w once you run the update, then all the softwares are kind of updated. Um, we can think of a scaling mechanism also going forward. Um, monitoring, you, you saw a very basic example. Uh, we can also see that how this composite, so we are not talking about one particular service now at this point in time, but as a composite, this service, how is it working now? Is it healthy is the question, right? So we can work more towards such things. So any opinion, any feedback on if we should be using this? Yes, please. So if I understand you correctly, the goal basically of that service fabric is to be able to combine different services for each separate service you have in Bosch. Right. 
But I believe there needs to be some glue that then puts all those things together to make it work together. Right. So you need to you need to have a PostgreSQL export its file transactions to Kafka and that needs to ingest that. What is this? Where does this glue come from? Yeah, so um, there are different components involved. Uh, one project which is uh, very, very interesting at this point in time is Debitzium uh, from uh, Red Hat, uh, which basically provides a lot of uh, um, uh, adapters onto the database uh, that basically you can, you can hook this up. It is also there on my, on, my, um, on my slide. And this kind of, they use some kind of a decode buff that basically, because the wall files, the write ahead logs or the commit logs are, uh, are binary files and they, they are not understood outside. So each database provider should provide um, some decoder that, that would basically, you know, kind of uh, can understand this. And, um, and so this decode buffs, they basically read this data from the wall, the, uh, the, the transaction log, and, and then kind of decode it and creates events uh, which is pushed into Kafka in this case. And then all other services that you have in your composition kind of hooked up into Kafka and um, they just extract the information out of Kafka and then uh, do whatever they, they want to do, uh, they are meant for, the services are meant for. Yeah, and the rest of the glue lies with, with the service fabric where, you know, this message passing and the credential exchange and all of this is kind of is done by service fabric. You can, of course, do that. Yes. So you, you, we don't want to lose that capability, right? Because you want to update Kafka to the next version, but not necessarily Postgres, right? Uh, but you should also be, uh, uh, you know, be able to update it together. Yeah. yeah. Let's put it very simply. Hmm. Templating plus glue plus some other things. When, when you put it in very simple terms. Right. Okay. Th that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thanks you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Thanks.